Welcome back to our series on rose and perfumery. So in this series, we're taking a deep dive into rose. So far, we've looked at rose itself, and then we've started to look into its constituents with both the terpenes and the aldehydes. In this video, we're gonna continue looking at the constituents, this time with the phenyl or phenyl derivatives. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna look at the phenyl or phenyl, depending on how you wanna pronounce it, constituents. Now, this isn't really a, a strictly defined class of aromachemicals, but I'm grouping them all into one video, and what's common about these is this phenyl ring. So this hexagon shape you see in the molecule with the three lines inside of it. So we've got five aromachemicals here. We've got phenyl ethyl alcohol, phenyl ethyl acetate, and phenyl acetaldehyde. These three are actually pretty closely related structurally, and you can tell it in the way they smell. Then we've got phenoxyethyl isobutyrate, which is a bit further off, but you can still kind of see some similarities. And then we've got eugenol, which technically doesn't really relate to the other ones at all, but it's still got this kind of ring structure in. So I'm going to chuck it in this video because there's not really anywhere else to put it. So there's not really a story behind this class or anything like that. So we're just going to start talking about them and go over them individually. And um, we're going to start off with phenylethyl alcohol because that is actually one of the most widely used aromachemicals in all of perfumery. And the reason for this is probably because it's good at, according to Art Tander, who is someone who writes about perfumery molecules, he says, this is really low cost and it's because it provides this kind of boosting effect or it just harmonizes quite well with a lot of different heart notes and it goes in a lot of blends. So I'm gonna smell this thing right now and I've got it at 10% in ethanol. And what it smells like to me is it's quite interesting because it's got this very clean, sterile smell to it. It reminds me a bit of a bit of a hospital, but it's got quite this quite crisp white uh, smell. And it almost, well, it does smell quite petal-like. And I can see why it's used in a lot of floral bases, in fact, and rose in particular. This is something that's found naturally in rose as well. And this is probably a lot of what contributes to that radiant um, kind of petal-like effect that you get from rose. So yeah, it's interesting. It smells somewhere between this kind of white, um, like sterile medicinal smell, and this white kind of crisp petal uh, kind of floral smell. So it almost feels like it's this this base for for a kind of any kind of petal smell that you want to get. This kind of soft diffusive petal smell. It feels like this is like the canvas upon which you would paint or something like that. I'm not an expert because I haven't actually used uh, phenylethyl alcohol or PEA as it's often called too much myself. But hopefully we'll find out uh, later on what the effect is on the rose. So next here I've got the phenylethyl acetate. So this is, like we've done many times before, the acetate version of the alcohol. So all we've done is we put this acetate group on top. Now phenylethyl acetate this one is actually changed quite a lot. And to me, it smells a lot more uh, fruity and honey-like. It's really changed the character from a purely kind of petal smell to something that still gives off a bit of this kind of diffusive, slightly floral smell. But it smells a lot sweeter. And I imagine that if you put this in the rose, I guess it would make it a lot more sweet and maybe even give it you that honeyed rose effect slightly. I guess we'll have to find out later. But this one, apparently it is found at 0.2% in the rose, so quite a tiny amount. And it's also quite widely used in all categories of perfume because of this sweet honeyed rose odor. But apparently this is actually quite commonly used at one to 10% in the perfume oil, the perfume concentrate in a lot of different perfume products. Anyway, moving on to the phenyl acetaldehyde. This one is actually really hard to say. It's definitely a tongue twister if you want to repeat that many times yourself. Now this one I've got here again, 10% solution. And apparently this one, you don't actually want to use too much of in your perfume. Apparently you want to use it at kind of amounts that are lower than about one or 2%. And the reason for that is apparently it's not so stable and it can kind of degrade quite quickly over time. So after a few months, the effect it has in your perfume is greatly diminished. So you can imagine you would go manufacture your perfume and by the time it's got to your distributor or something, the perfume smells kind of different or they're wondering why different batches smell different. So it does sound like this is something, uh, maybe especially if you're making perfume at home, 
to be a bit cautious about when you use it. Uh, I don't really understand why it's used so much if it is that unstable, but who knows. Anyway, what it smells like is what I would describe as quite a stemmy smell. And I don't think stemmy is a, a proper official perfumery word, but I think the uh, official term would be something more along the lines of hyacinth. Um, I think that flower smells similar to what I'm trying to describe. And it is indeed used in lots of hyacinth amongst other floral bases. Now this one, I'm not actually too sure if it's found in rose, but again, the book in which I'm using for the formulas for the rose accords that we're going to look at in one of the future episodes, that says this is one of the options that you can use inside of it. So we're going to look at it now in case we use it later. And that is also the same situation for this other one that I've got here, which is called phenoxyethyl isobutyrate. So again, this one at 10%, I don't think it's actually found in the rose, but it's very similar to something that is found in the rose, which is called phenethyl isobutyrate, which when you look at the structure is quite similar. I don't have that one, so we're gonna look at this phenoxyethyl isobutyrate. Now when I smell this, out of all the ones we've smelled so far, it's probably closest to the phenylethyl acetate, and that's because it's a lot more sweet and fruity. However, this one is a lot more subdued. The other ones I found were quite strong, and this one is quite subtle, and I actually find it to be quite indistinct. So I couldn't find too much about this one, but apparently it blends well with a lot of things, and it's just used in a lot of floral accords in general. Though also in flavorings, you can use it to make a tutti frutti flavoring, I assume with a lot of other different components. So this one, yeah, I would say it's just quite a subtle, indistinctive, uh, floral leaning, fruity smell. It definitely smells like something that's not very high impact given that it's 10% dilution. Anyway, so these ones are barely related in some way when you can see in the structure. The final one that I've got here is something called eugenol, and the only similarity, as I said before, is really the fact that it's got this six membered ring with these uh, three sets of double bonds or Technically in chemistry is what's called an aromatic ring because this magic happens where these three double bonds, they actually decide that they're gonna kind of transform into this kind of ring of bonds. And we're not gonna talk about that for now, but uh, just know that's why these rings are sometimes a bit special in chemistry. Anyway, the eugenol, I've got it diluted down to 1% and that is because it's quite strong. Anyway, this aroma chemical eugenol is actually the major constituent of clove essential oil. And when you go and smell the eugenol, you'll find it's no surprise that it really, really does smell quite strongly of cloves. It does smell slightly less complex than clove oil, but it is the main, um, that main kind of uh, distinctive clove smell that is pretty much, it seems to be the eugenol. So it's very kind of warm, fuzzy, spicy kind of smell to me. And even at 1%, it smells pretty strong. So apparently this is naturally found in rose at about 1% and it's used in incense or spicy style fragrances and rose bases as well, which is pretty unsurprising because it is basically a spicy kind of smell. I can imagine it being in some kind of warm spicy incense, but the fact that it is found in this 1% in rose, I guess that means if you wanna create a realistic rose accord, you would just add a tiny bit of this as well. And maybe when we were talking about the Damascena rose, I remember when smelling that, that I felt like there was some kind of dark, mysterious, spicy elements to the rose. It's quite possible that this eugenol is one of the main things that's causing that. So it would be interesting to see when we move on to actually mixing and making the accords, if that appears to indeed be the case. One final thing about eugenol is it is one of the key aroma chemicals that makes the smell of carnations and other floral distinctive from other flowers. So when you've left this eugenol on the sensor for a while, enough for it to get quite faint, you really do get this kind of carnation smell. So just a quick tip, if you're looking to make some kind of carnation accord, you're definitely gonna need eugenol as part of that. Anyway, that's it for these phenol or phenyl constituents that are found inside of rose. In the next video, join me as we look at the damascones and the ionones, which are two really, really important classes of aroma chemicals found in rose. Apart from that, remember to like and subscribe to the channel and have a good week and see you next time.